to Menopause Morph, your time to change. We're here to help you thrive through your menopause, bringing you experts in many fields to help you from perimenopause to menopause and beyond to become the strong, vibrant woman nature intended you to be. Hosted by Pauline McCarthy of the Pearls of Pauline. Pearls of wisdom, compassion, and joy. Hello, welcome to Menopause Morph. This week we have a really funny guest. It's time to have some fun in our lives, isn't it, ladies? So, Carol E. Wire is a best selling author of humorous words, you know, humorous novels, <laughs> lots of humorous words as well, and non fiction books, including Mini Skirts and Laughter Lines, Surfing in Stilettos, Just Add Spice, and How Not to Murder Your Grumpy. They all take a light hearted look at getting older and encourage others to age disgracefully. She has won several awards, including Reader's Favourite for Surfing in Stilettos, while Grumpy Old Menopause won silver at the Wishing Shelf Awards and recently won the prestigious People's Book Award Prize. Carol has been interviewed on numerous radio shows in the UK and abroad, discussing subjects such as irritable male syndrome and ageing disgracefully, and by NBC and BBC Breakfast TV. She has articles published in national magazines, Women's Weekly, featured in Take a Break, Choice, Yours and Women's Own magazines, and writes regularly for the Huffington Post. In 2014, following advice written in Grumpy Old Menopause, she took a crash course in stand-up comedy and now tours to sell out audiences with her comedy talk, Smile While You Still Have Tea. So welcome, Carol. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pauline. Sorry about trying to put you off with my award there. Yes, yes. You had me smiling when you I mentioned your award and you put it up. You know, um, but it's, it's it's always good to show off your awards. You know? Oh, it's it's a good one. It's it's crystal. It's crystal. Okay, but you can't put anything inside that crystal. <laughs> no, sadly, not. don't worry. I drank myself senseless beforehand. So. Oh my goodness! So that was really great to hear that and. Not only is it great for you and your award, but it really brings out the message of menopause. And here on Menopause Morph, we're trying to bring it out of the closet. You know, it's still a taboo subject, but it's on the verge of the doors are opening. (laughs) So we've got to let that guy out or that girl out. Yeah, I like to think that uh, Grumpy Old Menopause helped that because when it came out and went on to breakfast television, that then opened the floodgates, if you like, and uh, we we managed to get quite a lot of uh, response on the back of it. And that was the reason I wrote it, because I don't know about you, but I mean, my mother never discussed it at all. It it was just something that she suffered and we all suffered with her, you know, for years. And uh, when I started to approach it and start to get, you know, the hot flushes and things, I thought, I'm going to have to do some research. Research. And there's information, but it's scattered. Exactly. It's a lot of information, but and there's a lot to take in. So when I wrote the book, the idea was that it would be like sitting down with a big sister or a friend, you know, with a glass of wine and, and chat about the things that happen to you or could happen to you. And then I did a little bit of work on the website as well, so that you can go there. And and the idea is, as you say, it's a taboo subject still for many. But I'm delighted to see it is hitting the press. We're getting women that are well known celebs who are starting to say things about it, which is, it's what we need. We need to to feel that it isn't weird, we're not peculiar, and that, you know, we have got support. We've got a good support network. Exactly. And uh, (laughs) your take on it is to get through menopause with a smile on your face. A lot of women, as you said, they get really grumpy or they get, (laughs) you know, a little bit erratic, let's say. Oh, yes, Uh, I can yes. (laughs) So why did you write, you know, you mentioned there why you wrote about it, but you said you had a difficult time with your mother going through it. And what about yourself? How have you been experiencing it? Oh, not as badly as my mother. I mean, we talk about Moody. If the menopause lasts, you know, about 20 years in her case, it seems <laughs> she's so grumpy. Yeah. It's untrue. But for me, education is a key factor. Yeah. By knowing what was likely to happen and maybe change my diet and things like that, I was able to monitor my moods a lot better. But that's why I write it humorously. I write humorously because laughter is a great educator. You can learn a lot through laughter. And when I started to go through the menopause, I was in a 
shoe shop. It's in the book, actually. I was in a shoe shop and I got really hot. So I sort of stripped off the cardi and the scarf and everything. And I was doing all this with the receipt. <laughs> and the lady behind the counter said, oh, she says, I know what you're going through. And she told me about an incident where about two weeks prior to that, she'd had the same thing. You know how you get a hot flush and it starts right at your feet and she was burning up. So she pulled a jumper off and in doing so, she whipped her blouse off as well. <laughs> sat in the restaurant in her bra. <laughs> so she laughed about that. And then I told her that I'd woken up a few mornings ago and I'd lost one of my eyebrows. They just the hairs had fallen out. Yeah. And then I discovered they'd migrated, actually. They were above my upper lip. Yeah. So I told her that. <laughs> and we had a good laugh. But out of that, I thought, well, if you can make people laugh like that about a subject that's serious, then that is obviously the way to go forward. And so I use that as a catalyst for writing the book. So it's got information in it, but it's also got, you know, come on girls, you know, we can do this, we can lighten up. And there's some quite barkers, bonkers suggestions in there as well. (laughs) And I'm lucky I did stand up comedy because I was going to do burlesque or pole dancing. (laughs) But sadly, I had frozen shoulder, which is one of the symptoms you can get in menopause, ladies. Okay. And so they they do say laughter is the best medicine. Oh, without that. (laughs) Um, so when you were, what was your biggest symptom? What, what took you by surprise? Well, I think the panic attacks took me most by surprise. I had insomnia and I still have insomnia. That, that's been, I mean, it's, it's been a bane, but also it's allowed me to write because I just get up and write now. So I don't worry about it. And if I have to, I lie in bed. But the panic attacks were scary. They are very, very frightening. You wake up and you think you're having a heart attack. It's absolutely horrendous. And when it first started, I had to Google it because I thought, God, is there something wrong with me? Found out that it was likely to be erratic home hormones and devised my own method. So when I wake up and I have this unbearable fear, which is what happens with it, I try to connect with the floor, not with my head. I try to connect, you know, a leg with the floor. And then I sing that song from the Peter Sellers um, song, you know, that boom, buddy, boom, buddy, boom, buddy, boom. <laughs> and I just sing that. And I find that just calms me back down for the attack to stop so that was the worst symptom I had personally Uh and you know you've told us that you've started to do stand-up comedy so you must have had a lot of self-confidence to do that but a lot of menopausal women they suffer from low self-esteem so what advice would you give to somebody who's suffering from low self-esteem Well, funnily enough, that was one of the cures I gave people for suffering from low self-esteem. I said, it will happen. You will start to feel unwanted, not good. You don't feel good about yourself anymore. And to do that, you need to build up your confidence. And I suggested belly dancing. Fantastic. Seriously fantastic. I've done the belly dancing. If ever you want a group of supportive women and to start feeling like a sexy goddess rather than a Medusa, do belly dancing. Burlesque was another one. Why not? And then stand up. If you've got the gut, to do stand-up. I mean, stop. I didn't mean go straight out and do the Edinburgh Fringe. I just thought if you just wrote a few funny jokes and told your girlfriends, like I did this thing about being forgetful, and one of my first lines is, because, you know, you can walk down the stairs and you think, well, why have I walked down here? Or, you know, why is there washing up liquid in the fridge? And there's always something like that. And so I do a little skit with that, and I end up saying, so I went to the doctors because I was worried about forgetting things, and my memory was going. And he said, yes, Carol. He said, I think your memory is going. He said, Duh. I'm your accountant. So if you mind putting your clothes back on, can we talk about your tax return? And of course, that goes down well because people understand it. Exactly. So if you can just do a few jokes, and, and even if you just go out with a few girlfriends and just tell them a few jokes, I don't mean, you know, do the full men's club thing, as indeed I am doing for some strange reason. But it's great. If you get a few laughs, it uh-huh. boosts your morale. Yeah. And so talking about men, you know, our husbands, our partners, they have to put up with the crazy things that we do sometimes. So do you have any advice for the men in our lives? <laughs> yes, I suggest they go to their shed and they stay there for five years. <laughs> come out <laughs> at the beginning of um, every chapter in the book there's things you should hide from a menopausal woman so it starts with things like knives and scissors and it moves on to pepper spray and hand grenades and things <laughs> but seriously guys gen up i mean read, read the book or read information about it just so you can understand what the ladies in your life will be going through and i've been um, very impressed by the number of men who will write to me and say thank you i just wanted to 
know. I didn't want to ask. I just wanted to know. And it has made me a, a little more empathetic towards whatever my partner's going through, particularly the moods. And it's vice versa, though, isn't it, Pauline? Because men go through difficult times as well, or exactly. can do. Exactly. You know, they have their own private menopause, shall we say, or irritable male syndrome. They have their own problems. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure many people listening to this would be really interested to get your book. Where would they be able to buy it? Any good bookshop, order it, or you can get it from Amazon. You can download it on Kindle. Um, My website has links. Um, Safket Publishing, who published it, you can get it via their links there as well. So you can buy it almost anywhere. Yeah, and your website is uh, www.grumpyoldmenopause.com. Yeah, it's an easy one to remember. (laughs) (laughs) And do you think that after the menopause, their grumpiness will go away? Or do you think, you know, because I know a lot of people have their question is, how long are these symptoms going to last for? I I wish I could give you a definitive answer because it does depend on the individual. Um, If you are a very positive person, you can control those symptoms to an extent. Again, you will need help, you know, advice, but you will be able to. The good side is you will feel better at the end you will you will get your confidence back you will start to live again and not only that you will have a surge in confidence because it's been proven women have come through the other side of the menopause and you will you will believe me it might seem like you won't but you will and you will have this new lease for life and some women they will find bizarre things to do like run off with tango instructors in argentina (laughs) they will take up a challenge and i've got a friend who's cycling all through italy now and another one who's left and gone to australia and another who um she drives those big trucks in canada you know there's like ice road trucks oh yeah so Uh you will come through it and you will be stronger for it but you will have that confidence back and you will feel good about yourself and the bonus is you can wear white trousers again and not worry (laughs) (laughs) well this is really true it's like in menopause morph that's we were trying to inspire women to morph into the beautiful creatures that they're meant to be and it's the time in our life when you know, like before we had our periods, we had these dreams to become a princess or a ballerina or something. Yeah. And then the hormones kick in and it's just life, you know, and duty, duty, duty. And, and the, in menopause morph, we use this motif of a caterpillar. And we're like that, you know, munch, 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 look after the kids, munch, 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 look after the yes. husband, look after the, the work, you know. And then when we get to the chrysalis stage, you know, we're hot and sticky and our body's changing and we're scared. <laughs> That's right, it's right, it's true. But we're going to but, come out as beautiful butterflies, aren't we? But you will, that's right. I mean, that's that's the fact. You will emerge as a beautiful butterfly. Uh-huh. Not only that, you probably want to fly away a bit as well and exactly, see what Exactly, exactly. So. And um, on your website, do you list w- w- upcoming shows? Not the show so much, uh, but I, I will be doing links. I need to um, revamp my site a bit because I run a couple of sites. I run Facing 50 with Humour, which is obviously a lot of jokes and getting older. And I also have my website, so um, my author website. But what I intend to do, I have a lot of links to products and other people that um, have advice for you and, and various you know doctors or people like yourself. I'll be linking in so people can watch the podcasts and do that. And of course, we don't have any other shows over here particularly. Okay, because I would, I would love to come and see your show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do little bits for you on YouTube. <laughs> uh-huh. or maybe sometime we can do a show together because I, I do the show, <laughs> The Pearls of Pauline. I don't know if I told you about it, but it's um, self-help and some cabaret, some oh, Frank great. Sinatra, Shirley Bassey, with my <laughs> glitter and my feathers. And, <laughs> oh, fantastic. And, oh, wow, um, that would be great together. <laughs> I think it would be wonderful. So we'll, all our listeners, you have to look at both of our websites and you'll see this upcoming show, you know, and we'll see you in the autumn. <laughs> That's right. If you go onto my author website and go onto the events page, you'll find out when I'm doing my actual geeks in the country. That will yeah, tell you. That, would that gives you a clue to those. But uh, I really need to put some on podcasts like you and get them out there. So some t- so the next time I'm in the UK, I'm going to try and find your show. <laughs> <laughs> next time you're in the UK, I shall invite you on stage. <laughs> okay, why not? Why not? I mean, this is the thing. It's like so many women, when they think of menopause, they think, oh, my ovaries are shriveling up and, and my kids have left the nest. I'm just going to become an old crone. But actually, it's the time to blossom and way, have a party. <laughs> It is very much that. It's difficult to explain to women because they are, a lot of them do live their lives through their children and they feel, as do some men actually, they have this loss of worth, self-worth when the kids leave home. And I remember watching my son drive away and for, I don't know, five minutes there was this leaden weight inside me. I can't describe it more than that. It was like an end of my life, Mm -hmm. everything I poured into it. 
And then I went into his bedroom and converted it into an office and started writing. Yes. (laughs) And and now to this day, I I don't have that feeling. I feel that was a productive part of my life. And now I have another productive part. And I say to these women, put your life into little boxes. You know, you, you have lots of boxes in your life. You don't have one. You know, when your children go and when you're at this stage, it's only one box. You need to just now look for something else for you. It's your time. Don't forget that. You know, it's for you. And you are actually at the best time of your life. I know we've got the wrinkles and things, but hey, we've got the bad eyesight as well, so we can't see them. You know, we, I know there's all that. You just It's getting that confidence back. That is the biggest problem, I think, for us. Yeah. And so it's nearly time to wrap up. So what is the best bit of advice you could give a woman looking for guidance through the menopause? You've really got to do your homework. It's like anything in life. Look up anything that you think you might be worried about and join groups like uh, Menopause Magazine and, and groups like that on Facebook. So you've got the supportive network that you maybe don't have you know, in, in real life, shall we say. The beauty of the internet is that you can find support in all sorts of forms I would say go and find some support and then you will always have someone that will be on your side and will probably understand what you're going through because you need a friend I think you need a friend definitely definitely well thank you very much Carol and we're looking Pleasure. forward to seeing your show <laughs> thank you thank you for inviting me thank, Been you, very much. thank you Pauline thank you and if you enjoyed this episode please like us on iTunes and give us a review a very honest one you can even give us a funny review okay thank you bye thanks for listening to menopause morph your time to change if you've enjoyed the program be sure to subscribe to the next one and please leave a rating and review on itunes to help us spread the message about thriving through the menopause to get a free ebook more menopausal resources and to connect with pauline please visit www.menopausemorph.com dot com.